Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we will be talking about Hurricane Ian. So Ian has reintensified into a hurricane uh, yesterday and now it is en route to the southeastern states of the US. And we also have that disturbance, uh, that tropical wave that has emerged off Africa, given a medium chance to develop. And in the long term, the models are showing that something might try to develop in the vicinity of the Caribbean and so we'll be taking a look at that later down in this video and so before I go into details please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important updated video on the tropics and to show your support for the channel you can leave a like on this video all right and so let's go ahead and start off with a general look at the Atlantic Basin and so there we have Hurricane Ian uh, about to make its way into portions of the southeastern US and we see quite a bit of activity across some areas such as the Caribbean and then off the coast of Africa there we have that tropical wave that recently emerged and is expected to develop. So let's go ahead and take a look at the latest on Ian and so here's a closer view of the cyclone. It is definitely uh, starting to possess the features of an extratropical cyclone here but it is still a very dangerous hurricane now looking at the national hurricane center's cone forecast we're seeing here that ian has maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the north northeast at nine miles per hour so definitely not moving quickly and that slow motion is helping it to really intensify because of course uh, it would have more time over those warm ocean waters and so that's the reason uh, we're seeing some more intensification but the system should move inland uh, later today it should make landfall in South Carolina later today and so that area uh, is under a hurricane warning the coast of uh, South Carolina and the southern portion of North Carolina and the rest of North Carolina is under a uh, tropical storm warning as well as portions of southeastern Georgia so uh, this is going to be moving inland and it's going to be bringing along with it strong winds that storm surge as well as that very heavy rainfall that is likely to result in uh, flooding across flood prone areas and so please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe and where we have this yellow area right here that is indicating the extent of the tropical storm force wind field and that is just indicating how massive Ian is but uh, it is expected to become post tropical and dissipate by the end of this week but nonetheless the remnants could still be a problem for some states within the area as uh, they might still be associated with quite a bit of rainfall so please be aware of that on the horizon for you guys in the southeastern U.S. And then now let's go ahead and talk about this disturbance out in the Atlantic. And so we're seeing that we have all this disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity off the coast of Africa. But it is likely that we will be seeing development of this system here because uh, conditions ahead of it seem conducive. And models have been trading towards this thing developing, but fortunately missing the Caribbean. And as I said earlier, uh, this is not what we want to talk about being a possible threat to the Caribbean, but rather another system that models such as the GFS uh, were picking up on it. And so here we have the five-day hours look for this system here. And the National Hurricane Center designates a 50% chance of possible development of this wave and so uh, the chance is likely to keep increasing as time goes by and uh, eventually we could see this one developing into our next name storm and the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Julia so uh, we'll be seeing if this is going to become Julia although I have good confidence that it will but in terms of it being a threat to land uh if it makes its way close to the vicinity of the Cabo Verde Islands maybe they can experience some increased rainfall from it but uh models have been trending towards this actually missing the Caribbean and being uh, out in the open waters of the Atlantic but of course things can change and we just have to keep watching the system as time goes by and then let's go ahead and take a look at conditions across the region and so we're starting off with the sea surface temperature map and we're seeing here that things remain quite conducive i mean in the gulf of mexico the caribbean off the east coast uh in the vicinity of ian uh we definitely have some conducive ocean temperatures that will enable some more intensification of the system before it moves inland but uh if we have something say trying to develop as it heads westward to the caribbean there is 
uh, favorable conditions in terms of the sea surface temperature and that is the main factor that results in tropical cyclone development so things are still pretty much warm out there and then as we look at the ocean heat content map we see that it is still off the charts for portions of the Caribbean especially the northwestern Caribbean here very deep warm ocean waters and that is really what helped Ian to rapidly intensify into a major hurricane while it is while it was in the northwestern Caribbean uh, but of course it made its way into the Gulf of Mexico where it intensified even more to a high-end category 4 hurricane and made landfall in the states of Florida but uh, things are as I said things are pretty much conducive out there right now and i really think that tropical wave has the potential to develop but of course other factors such as the wind shear as well as how much moisture is in the environment are important to consider as well because looking now at this water vapor map right here so water vapor is associated with moisture of course and so there we have that tropical wave and we really don't see much dry air within the region and that dry air is indicated by the yellow so we're not really seeing that being something that is going to be inhibiting development and uh, as I speak the dry air has been the main inhibiting factor of tropical cyclones throughout this hurricane season and so now that we're heading into the month of October and November I think that we could really see quite a bit more systems develop across the region and so let's go ahead and now take a look at what I was saying earlier the model runs so we'll be looking at the GFS euro and icon and let's go ahead and start out with GFS and so as we're going to be heading to October by October 4th there we have the model showing that we're going to be having that wave developing and heading out to sea but look at that in the vicinity of the Lesser Antilles and making its way across the Caribbean being a little bit erratic with that center so GFS has been consistent about something developing in the Caribbean uh, as we're going to be heading near the middle part of October week after next week and uh, of course this isn't something that is definitely going to be happening because of course it is a forecast and the model model has also been uh, inconsistent with where exactly it will go but the main thing is that it is expecting development in the Caribbean so we'll have to wait and see for that looking at what the euro is showing now uh, by Monday going to Tuesday we see that we start to have that wave of Africa getting itself together and of course once we have a lower pressure it means that the system is getting stronger and we see some moisture which is indicated by the teals uh, making its way across portions of the Caribbean but euro is not expecting a development of a tropical cyclone within the area so a big contrast between these two models here and then as we go ahead and take a look at the icon model uh, icon is showing something a little bit interesting so uh, as we head to uh, next week we're seeing here that the model has that wave of Africa developing and uh, maybe becoming something but take a look at that low and turn the Caribbean that is quite interesting that could be hinting maybe at some possible future development and so uh, guys we're talking about something for the long term and what we're seeing now is not at all guaranteed to be what the what the eventual outcome is going to be but of course the hurricane season is not over yet we still have two months of the uh, season left and it is likely that we we will definitely be seeing activity in these two months so uh, of course i'm going to be keeping you updated on what is happening out there and uh, that is really it for this video so uh, if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share thoughts and of course remember to always be weather wise and i will keep giving the necessary updates as time goes by